for the past couple years, maybe I shouldn't say what exactly a couple means, um, I've been working on a book of poems called The Child's Primer of Augury, which is a, a collection of a, this, this sort of interlinked narrative of a pack of feral children as they learn morality and learn to communicate with the dead, raise the dead, things like that. Um, and these poems are all taken from that. Can you hear me? A little louder. Okay. Let's see. How is that? Any better? Oh, yeah. good. This one is titled Brazilian Telephone, which is a line from an Edward Hirsch poem, which in turn I think he took from uh, CIA training manuals for the School of the Americas in the 80s. Brazilian Telephone. In the peach orchard in an old bathtub, the children are standing someone in a bath of salt water, and one gently attaches electrodes to the nipples of the one in the bath. Out of the weeds runs one with a rescue battery from the old motorhome, which they had gotten to rev its engine like the sad bleating of a goat. If later anyone asks how they learned to do this, in a striped shirt, one will say, oh, I was looking for science experiments in those old textbooks we got from the library book sale. I have been baking all day, and in a few minutes we'll start to wonder what happened to that box of coarse kosher salt I got just last week. The children are all singing some ditty from a musical we saw at the community theater. And in the tub, the one with electrodes affixed, so gently to his chest, is calling out little mews of uncertainty, is calling and calling into the sundown, past the knotted trees with their hairy fruits, green and hard. Hush, hush, don't worry, another one is saying, fingernail following a line of I think this one is called the Brazilian telephone. One says, connecting finally, after all this buildup, the ends of two wires to the battery terminals, which, with steel wool stolen from the kitchen, they had cleaned so carefully earlier in the day. Um, this one, perhaps less creepy, is called Siamancy. Um, Siamancy is the observation of ghosts or shadows as a divination technique. My usual name had left me, gone up a panther trail, a hog path through the gap where my great aunt lived when she lost a bunch of boys to TB. And I was out with my bicycle to find red nettle and fever grass to get better and bring it back before my death gave me the cold. I joined the church 57 times, I guess, when I was a little girl, but none of it ever took. Sometimes, when I lay in bed and ate nothing but a spoonful of sugar with a little camphor, I would wait to hear my ghost walking around in the dark. Get up right now, I'd tell myself, and I'd brew coffee on the wood stove and stay up, calling him back. One time, we got to fussing, and by dawn he'd left. He got to where you couldn't tell him anything, but soon enough, my right name would return from the hollows, whistling a tune, and I would feel my skin set true, and know it was the death name that had died and left a dead one. When I rode through the chills, lost in the bottom land, and said not a word, so none would recognize my voice, just past there lay the leafless tree and the unleavened stone the pasture wild with blackberry, and knotted around the knees of milk cows, black snakes drinking from their udder. There, my death name, sitting on a stump to pass the time. And this one's called, I Passed Three Girls Killing a Goat, which is just the first line. I passed three girls killing a goat Shotgun leaned up against a tree, and the entrails spilling into a coil on the ground. It was hooked between the tendons of its back legs to a high branch that gently creaked, like a dry hinge of busybody aunties with the oil. Blood drained into a pail. You could smell it shifting with the air, and black flies landed in the shadows of things where the wind didn't touch. I 
dreamed I was carrying a sack full of animals, and it dragged blood in the gravel and stained my skirt front. You could follow my trail to the county line, where old Min sat on the liquor store porch. One crooked his half arm to the bottle where the auger had caught his hand. I dreamed I was in a new country, rinsing livers under a spigot, and the men cracking black walnuts on a stone named my limbs like the weather, like none of us knew the same words. By the tree, the girls and the goat were faltering. One squatted to sharpen her blackened blade on a straw, and the men on the county line leaned back on the heels of their chairs, talking about anything, each other, spring weather, the long-haired boy scalped by a combine. And one of them swore you only plant beans with the moon in Capricorn, otherwise the fields choke up with scrub juniper. One looked intently at his left palm, his right wrist uselessly brushed the woven seat of his chair. When a wind came, the screen door leapt up on its leather hinges, which never creaked slammed shut. Mud daubers in the muck by the spigot blew sideways around my ankles. And inside, I could hear the woman who lived with the liquor store proprietor cursing as she locked up the banana like she knew how to break the back of a goat. Thank you.